A year ago yesterday, during the first pandemic 4th of July in living memory, one bright spot of hope was Hamilton. It was already a phenomenon, but on Independence Day 2020, it became a phenomenon that almost anyone could finally watch. I'm Lynn with the Carrollton Public Library, and whether you've been a Hamill fan since 2015, just discovered it last year, or are wondering why anyone could possibly be so excited about the guy on the $10 bill, today we're going to be looking at books that, like the musical, explore the life of Alexander Hamilton and the dramas of this country's early years. It's almost impossible to talk about Hamilton and not mention Ron Chernow's biography, Alexander Hamilton. Lin-Manuel Miranda himself admits to having been inspired by this book, which is a comprehensive look at the life of a founding father that, until recently, most people didn't think of very often. It's long, and it's dense, but if there's something you want to know about the life and times of Alexander Hamilton, including all of the historical liberties that the musical took, you can't go wrong with this one. One of the things that made Hamilton the musical so innovative was that it took an old story, the founding of the United States, but told it through different eyes. The musical centered non-white faces and storytelling, as well as the work of women, to tell a story we already know in a revolutionary way. If that spirit spoke to you, you'll probably be interested in a new biography of George Washington called You Never Forget Your First. This is the first biography of George Washington written by a woman in over 40 years. And Alexis Coe leans into her female perspective about a well-known figure who has rarely been viewed through a woman's lens. Coe gives lie to the idea that biographies of even great men have to be long, boring, and written by other men. This sharply clever, often pointed work is not afraid to poke fun at its predecessors and make sure not to hide from the occasionally ugly truths about George Washington that get glossed over by history. Hamill fans can debate forever about who is the best character in the musical, but I cast my vote for America's favorite fighting Frenchman, the Marquis de Lafayette. While in real life he probably couldn't spit mad rhymes, he had a fascinating and revolutionary, pun intended, life. If you're interested more about his life, and particularly his time in what would eventually become the United States of America, I have to recommend Lafayette and the Somewhat United States by Sarah Vowell, who describes herself as a history-adjacent narrative nonfiction wise guy. As you may have guessed, this is not your dad's biography, in that it doesn't take itself or its subjects any more seriously than they deserve. Finally, if you're anything like me, you watched Hamilton several times and thought music Fabulous. Acting? Incredible. History? Awesome. But why wasn't there more romance? For us, I offer My Dear Hamilton by Stephanie Dre, a novel that is just as well researched as any of the biographies I've mentioned so far. My Dear Hamilton novelizes an adult Eliza Schuyler Hamilton's memories of her years as the wife of Alexander Hamilton. It provides an adult perspective on what was a youthful love story and offers a woman's perspective on the events of the revolution and the early days of a budding democracy. That's what I have for you today. As always, there are links to the books I've talked about today in the show notes, as well as further reading recommendations, and you can always feel free to ask your librarian. Be sure to sign up for summer reading program. We're nearly halfway through, but there's still plenty of time.